It's so peaceful beading. And Crow Indian bead artist Marlene Stewart is very good at it, handcrafting beaded cradle boards, belts, armbands, medallions, elf tooth dresses, and more. Therapeutic. You betcha. <laughs> She's a cheerful artist who loves her work. Oh, yeah. You give me a cigarette and a cup of coffee and a light, and I'll be beating away. Marlene's art is not only her joy and passion. I listen to country music, so it's going full blast. <laughs> but her livelihood as well. Who's your favorite country artist? Alan Jackson, of course. And she always has a ready buyer, thanks to the Custer Battlefield Trading Post. Oh, yeah, I could always depend on him. He always looked out for me. But it's like my brother, you know, he's not some stranger. He's always looking out for me. Putt is Putt Thompson, who together with his wife Jill, opened the trading post here on the Crow Indian Reservation back in 1985, just across the road from the entrance to the Little Bighorn National Monument, site of Custer's legendary last stand. They weren't treating it as art, and it just didn't seem right because there's so many artistic people that live around here. I mean, like Marlene Stewart's work, it's just gorgeous. The Trading Post, which includes a very popular restaurant, is like a Native American art gallery. Its walls adorned with beautiful traditional war shirts, headdresses, cradle boards, paintings, and more. All for sale. Created by the area's many Crow and Cheyenne artists and other Native Americans whose work supports their family. The cottage industry is big here because of the Trading Post. I think that's one of the things that Putt and I are happiest about, that We've been able to create a store that shows the work of the Crow or the Cheyenne. Being located next door to the world famous battlefield is the perfect magnet to attract those interested in native art and all kinds of other cool Western merchandise displayed here, including a fabulous bookstore stocked with the seemingly endless titles on the Custer battle and other stories of the Old West, many of which happened right in this neighborhood. It's really enjoyable to get to know the people, whether they're local people and you get to know them because of the crafts and things like that. But it's also tourists, the people that come through, because you never know who you're going to meet that day. You never know uh, what their story is. Marlene, who speaks Crow, has great stories, like the origin of her family's tribal name, Takes the Horse. They stole them. The Pawnees come over and stole all our horses and took them to Oklahoma. And so the two braves, Crow Braves, walked on the way back to Oklahoma, uh, retrieved all the horses and brought them back. And out of the two, one was named Tex the Horse. So that's where I come from. Marlene's work is a reflection of Crow culture like the medicine wheel patterns she creates. A lot of tribes claim it, but it actually belonged to the crows. Inspired by the ancient medicine wheel south of here in Wyoming's Bighorn Mountains on what was once Crow land. The chief that made the medicine wheel, his name was Burnt His Face. His face was so badly burnt that he would not come amongst the tribe and so he stayed up in the mountains and while he was up there he was making a medicine wheel. Putt and Jill have not only long loved native art but they've encouraged artists like Marlene to revive dying traditions like cradle boards. That was a dying art it wasn't being done but once Putt started asking these uh, ladies would you make a cradle board I commission you to make a cradle board and then it's over the past 30 years, we've seen a resurgence of, of a part of the culture that was starting to be lost. In fact, Putt and Marlene collaborated on the design for this cradle board. I don't want them to buy it. Do you want to know why? Because Putt had work going into that, and I did too. And so that's something to show off, you know? We done this. We done this. In addition to providing a built-in market for native artists, the store also employs about 40 people, most of whom are Crow and Cheyenne. Plus, the trading post is packed with all kinds of cool stuff for the rest of us to take home. 
It's a win, win, win. A trading post that keeps native people working and artists thriving, giving countless visitors from everywhere the chance to take home the authentic, beautiful work of Indian artists who make their home in this legendary part of the American West.